Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the news of Ashfiruq TV. Today's stories include Hamadok, the government's aims to remove Sudan from current trusteeship, close. Foreign Ministry welcomes a statement of High Commissioner for Human Rights. Gooders, positive strides made in Khartoum, Juba, over Rabia. Hello and welcome to the news. Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadok said that the Sudanese people are fully protected and aware of purposeful news that aims to undermine the goals of the Great Revolution, adding that in the atmosphere of freedom and transparency, there are always the challenges between rumors and the correct news. Dr. Hamadok tweeted, we work for the remove of the Sudan from Chapter 7 to Chapter 6, which allows Sudan to ask the United Nations what can be done by the management of Sudanese people and not by dictations from the UN. He pointed to the presence of the UN in Sudan for more than 10 years, adding the matter of Sudan is managed by the UN under Chapter 7. The Prime Minister has pointed out that Sudan wants the assistance of the United Nations according to its experience in the number of other regions around the world in regard to the National Constitution Conference, noting that the elections are the largest process that the country would run outside the framework of war and in which the United Nations can contribute. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has welcomed the statement of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, in which he called for the remove of the name of Sudan from the list of states sponsor of terrorism and providing the necessary assistance to the transitional government to contribute to the success of the democratic transition in the country. In a press statement, the foreign ministry has also welcomed all the efforts and the friends of Sudan in all parts of the world, aiming at the success of the transitional period. The UN has said Sudan will suffer hugely without international assistance that will help the country overcome its economic crisis brought by unilateral sanctions and exasperated by the COVID-19. Dr. Michel Bachelet, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, expressed serious concerns about the crisis facing Sudan's transition in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, saying that untold suffering awaits unless donors act fast. In a press release by the UN Human Rights Body, Bachelet said barely a year after the removal from power of long-time ruler Omar al-Bashir, the promise of economic and social development, democracy, justice and peace is now being threatened by acute resource constraints on the transitional government of Sudan. She added that these are being exasperated by a combination of the practical effects of ongoing unilateral sanctions, the failure of international institutions to provide debt relief, and the deficit of international support. The government of Sudan has affirmed that it's not seeking to bring in a new mission of the United Nations, but rather changing the nature of the mixed UN mission already in the country by moving from Chapter 7 to partnership and cooperation with the United Nations under Chapter 6 of the Organization Charter, concerned with the peace building and with full respect for the Sudan's sovereignty, unity, independence and territorial integrity. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated in a press release that Sudan's request for the reformulation of the relationship with the international system does not imply the slightest tolerance of its possession of its national decision. The Ministry has affirmed its keenness to work with the international organization to ensure respect for the national decision and the adoption of national visions and priorities throughout the process of rebuilding of the partnership between the two parties. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres recommended the extension of the mandate of the UN Interim Security Forces for Abyei, UNISFA, for a period of six months until the 15th of October 2020, praising the positive steps made both in Khartoum and Juba from October 2019 till April 2020. In a report issued over the situation in Abyei, Guterres said, I am optimistic that peace dividends from the transitions in both countries, as well as interaction between the two, will have a positive impact on peace 
and development. However, these developments have also highlighted the need to ensure that the mechanisms established in 2012 in the cooperation agreements are fully implemented. The UN chief said the governments of the Sudan and South Sudan have paid limited attention to their responsibilities regarding ABA as they have had other pressing priorities. Sudanese Prime Minister Dr. Abdullah Hamadouk had pledged to support the appointment of Deputy Head of Mission for UNISFA in the disputed area of ABA, said Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of UN Peacekeeping Department on Tuesday. Lacroix requested the Security Council to extend the UNISFA mandate for six months after reporting about the recent attacks in the disputed area and the need to end the intercommunal violence between the Denknogok and the Miseria. Lacroix told the video conference meeting that the enhancement of the UN support to the AU through the appointment of a deputy head of mission for UNISFA becomes more important while the special envoy works with the AU to seek ways to revitalize the political process. The President of South Sudan State, Lieutenant General Salfa Kermi Ardet, the sponsor of the South Sudan's mediation to the Sudanese peace negotiations, urged the Sudanese parties to exert more efforts and make concessions to reach a comprehensive agreement. During his meeting with the Southern Sudan's mediation team for the Sudan's peace negotiations, headed by Todd Galwak and Dio Matok, President Salfa Kermi was briefed on the progress of the negotiations. Tut Galwak noted in a press statement after the meeting that they had informed President Salfa Kir, the sponsor of the Sudan's peace process, about the latest developments in negotiations following the recent developments imposed by the corona pandemic. Galwak has emphasized concern of mediation and President Salfa Kir on achieving a comprehensive peace in Sudan. The Federal Ministry of Health has announced the registration of 57 new cases of coronavirus infections, in addition to three death cases. The new cases were registered in the states of Khartoum, 55 cases, and Jazeera, two cases. The Federal Ministry of Health stated in its daily announcement that the total number of cases of infection with coronavirus since the beginning of the pandemic in Sudan is 375 cases, including 28 death. The Sudanese embassy in Cairo launched an electronic form to assess the number of Sudanese stranded in Egypt with the aim of developing a strategic plan to repatriate them. The embassy asked all Sudanese nationals who are stranded in Egypt and wish to return to fill in the electronic form. Applicants must provide the name of the stranded person, his or her travel companions, the date of entry into Egypt, phone number, reason for entry, place of residence in Egypt, and place of residence in Sudan. And here we remind you with the headlines. Hamadok, the government aims to remove Sudan from current trusteeship close. Foreign Ministry welcomes a statement of High Commissioner for Human Rights. Gooders, positive strides made in Khartoum, Juba, over Rabia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.